what should we call this? Year end wrap. Year uh, end. Year end wrap up. Wrap up. Year end retrospective. Year end. Because it's not just a retrospective. I don't want people to think like it's just going to be clips. Mm-hmm. Year. Final episode of the year. Welcome to this. The end of season two. End of the year special. Special. What's special? It's, spe- it's a different. It's a different format. Are we on? I hope so. Okay, good. Because all this is gold. Yeah. I've got a bunch of movies that I've never seen before. You don't know what they are. Every episode, I'm going to spring one on you. We'll watch it and talk about it. Welcome to the basement. Hello, basement dwellers. Welcome to Welcome to the Basement's end of the year special. We are going to be looking back at 2013 and all the wonderful movies that we've seen. And we're going to reflect on what we've learned. Yeah, try to figure out what went wrong. We watched a lot of great movies this year. Some were great, some were not so great. They're of all different kinds from all over the world, and uh, let's take a look back on the movies we saw. I carry paint all around the town, I dress all up, wanna buy some paint. Find some paint, find some paint. Farmers talk of nothing but fertilizer and women. No more shitting bitches. <laughs> Look, Harvard is like this big Santa Claus bag stuffed full of all kinds of crazy toys. That's what Veritas stands for. <laughs> you could be whatever you want, babe. What? I want to get rid of big stick. Is she speaking that made-up Nell language? If I don't go, got Angie come. Maybe we ought to go home now, huh? Didn't get a word of that. <laughs> Let's get out of this fake snow before it gives us cancer. <laughs> <laughs> Bedazzled. You'll love the rape scene. <laughs> there was a Sharon who worked here about a year ago, but she's split. Oh, yeah. Money. Paging Mr. Yeah. Herman. Yeah. Mr. <laughs> Herman. I don't mean to alarm you, Miss Goodmanson. But, oh! But, Brad, you love Jello. And here's a year's supply of it. Eat it now. She's trying to hypnotize him with her <laughs> pounding on the wall and her boobies. I can sense she's really naked over there. I address you tonight not as the President of the United States, but as the narration for some sort of Super Bowl ad. Ringo's gonna lose that ring. Gonna lose that ring. He's gonna gonna lose that ring. All right, there's a port in a western bay. And it serves a hundred ships a day. This is what's great about Bollywood, is this slightly tubby, very average-looking man is a romantic hero. (laughs) Space. This park looks like a piece of liver. Let's have some music in here, Boiler. Sure thing. Slow ride! Take it easy! What makes you think you're good enough? Tits. You're not fooling anyone, Neil. <laughs> Dialing phone, dialing phone. Make it look real. Make it look real. <laughs> Hello? I like to think of myself as a cranky anchor. <laughs> Five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Where's Mom and Slade? I'm going window shopping again? Or is she out gabbing with the neighbors? Which is it, huh? Rabbing with the neighbors. This will drown out the cat noises that are my conscience. And yet they mew. (laughs) (laughs) Cut. May I? Yes, certainly. Thank you. Ladies, please don't read the Necronomicon aloud. <laughs> Terrible things will happen. Do not raise up what you cannot put down. You know, but if you're living up in Scandinavia this time in history, head in a pike. It's nothing. People walk by that and they'll be like, yep, it's Thursday. My name is Sam. My name is Autumn. My name is Jennifer. My name is Stu. <laughs> you have no right. To push and shove us little kids around. Now, I disagree with this. I would have agreed with you back when you were your age, but I love pushing kids around, and <laughs> I see it is my right. It's so easy. Hey, Bart, 
Wham! Viewer No Thank You writes, What is the best movie you've watched on the show this year? I want to say The Magician because it moved me forward as a movie appreciator, it seems. Oh, wow. But I'd have to say that probably The Magnificent Seven. Wow. It still works after 50 years. Great action-adventure movie. Well, this whole year, if you ask me that, I would have said Bedazzled. It's such a great, solid comedy. It's so ahead of its time. But due to recent developments, I'm going to have to say The 5,000 Fingers of Dr. T was my favorite movie of the year. Merry Christmas! (laughs) It's just like... One of those movies you watch it and you're like, where have you been all my life, you know? (laughs) And now, your least favorite movie of the year. I think I know what you're going to say. There's a lot that would qualify. (laughs) We had five movies that I just thought were horrible. One was amusing in retrospect that would be Tough Guys Don't Dance. One, I knew it was going to be horrible, and that's Masked and Anonymous. Two were very disappointing because I wanted them to be so good. One was My Son, My Son, and the other one was Help. But really, the hands-down worst movie I've seen this year... Meow! And maybe of my entire life... (laughs) Is Fritz the Cat. There was nothing good about that movie. I hated Fritz the Cat as well. But I don't think it was the worst movie we've seen. Because Fritz the Cat, as awful as it was... It did have moments of genuine artistry. At times, it was stunning. Mm -hmm. But one of the movies we saw this year didn't have none of that... And that was My Son, My Son, What Have You Done? Yes. Which is a complete, ugly, pointless waste of time. That's right. One of the great talent bombs of all time. And Michael Shannon couldn't even make it enjoyable. Udo Kier couldn't make it enjoyable. (laughs) (laughs) Mala, mala, película. (laughs) Wow. It's turned you bilingual. Yeah, I know. I I couldn't speak Spanish when I got here. I want to talk more about all that jazz. Oh. Now, we criticized all that jazz for self-indulgence, and I think we were right in doing so. But I thought a little bit more about self-indulgence, and I came to the conclusion that self-indulgence is always a gamble worth taking. Because it may work, it may not, but your film is going to be intensely personal and intensely original, and those are two of the hallmarks of great art. You look at Wes Anderson films, they're very self-indulgent, but they work. Yes. You look at Tough Guys Don't Dance, very self-indulgent, and it's a disaster. Yes. But both movies are movies that you'll never forget. There is one thing I said earlier this year that I regret saying, and I was called out on it a lot. We were talking about the movie Gravity, and I said that there is no gravity in outer space. Yes, there is gravity in outer space. I'm sorry about that, science people out there. I bet you thought you wouldn't be visiting the old leather couch tonight, didn't you? I didn't know what we were going to do tonight. You haven't told me anything. Well, if you did, you couldn't be more wrong. Because tonight, we're watching a double feature. But never fear, the combined length of both films is a mere 46 minutes. We're watching short films! Ah, excellent! How about we watch one right now? (laughs) (laughs) And I got more to read Oh, I was planning on... Yeah. Okay. No. In our very first episode of Welcome to the Basement, when we watched 1922's Nanook of the North, I said we'd be going back to the dawn of cinema. But I wasn't even close, because there was decades of cinema before Nanook, including this film, that is often seen as a landmark in the development of the visual language of filmmaking. I am, of course, talking about the 12 minute epic. The Great Train Robbery! (laughs) I had a feeling you were going there. Before the cameras started rolling, folks, Craig was just telling me about how he just watched The Great Train Robbery. That's right. Well, now you get to see it again. That's good. I'll be able to notice the subtleties. Released in 1903, 110 years ago, and directed by Edwin S. Porter, a man known for such films as The Donkey Party, The Gay Shoe Clerk, and Scarecrow Pump. Those are all real titles. (laughs) This film is one of the first narrative movies ever made, and it paved the way for the story-based cinema that is so popular nowadays. No more of that train pulling out of station or two men dancing like it was before that. Now we have actual plots. A A man sneezing no longer puts asses in seats. In 1905, Porter made The Little Train Robbery, a parody of his own film where a gang of child bandits holds up a mini train and steals all the dolls and candy. Oh, that sounds adorable. And now, I will read more Edwin S. Porter film titles, because they are hilarious. Uncle Josh in a Spooky Hotel. How the Dutch Beat the Irish. (laughs) With their fists. The Burlesque Suicide, number two. New York City Ghetto Fish Market. (laughs) And Weary Willie Kidnaps a Child. Get, Get in the van. Come on. Do you know how to drive? Saddle up for the Great Train Robbery. 
Not great. I don't know. It's a train robbery. I'll give it that. <laughs> Bandits break into a train station and they tie up and manhandle a telegraph operator. Now we're going to dress you up like a dancing girl. And off they go to rob the train. We're here to steal all your methylamine. We've got to bring it back to a feller named Heisenberg. They find the car that has the box with the valuables in it. What kind of way was that to die? He got shot and he went... <laughs> he fell down like this. And they blow it up. There's a fight on top of a train where a railroad uh, pilot... He's... What is it? The engineer. Where a railroad engineer is beaten. Pounds his head in with a big hunk of coal. Suddenly, he turns into a scarecrow. Oh, what? <laughs> oh, come on now. <laughs> it's time to shake down the passengers. Hands up in the air. They rob everyone on the train. All right, you dandies. Give us all your spats and cravats. And all of your fobs. And all of your nosegays. <laughs> your pince nez. Glasses. <laughs> Does anyone here have a Spanish rough? One guy makes break for it, gets shot in the back. Anyone who gets shot dies in a somewhat melodramatic fashion. The bandits take off with their sacks of loot. All right, fellas, well done. Great robbery. I got a couple of notes for you. If you, if you guys could just slow down. I just want to get these out while they're fresh in my head. I, Easy victory, or is it? Because the telegraph operator, he wakes up. He tries to signal back into town with his face. That doesn't work, but luckily, a little girl shows up. She unties his hands. We gotta round up a posse. Meanwhile, a party's going on. And the telegraph operator shows up, and he's like, Guys, train robbery. It's great. We gotta get out of here. And they chase the bad guys. I swear, the first time I saw that, that dance sequence was like an hour and a half long. And they're like, all right, let's split up the cash and get out of here. All the posse shows up. Big gun battle. And all the bandits are killed. But one comes back for you. Well, who's this guy? Wait, oh, no, 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 no don't no, do it. No, no. no. A train was robbed, and justice was served. All in 12 minutes. That's a very efficient crime task force they have <laughs> out in the great American West. It wasn't bad. It's a fun little movie. It's, yeah. a, it's a story. There's not much for character development. I mean, the, the extent of character development was there is a child who is sad. And the bad guys are bad enough that they'd actually beat a man's head in with a huge lump of coal. Obviously, you know, the final shot of the film was paid tribute to at the end of Goodfellas. There's location filming in this. It's weird to have on-location footage on one hand, and then you have this extremely theatrical 19th century style of, of sets that they right. had. Sets with painted on furniture and mm -hmm. kind of going at war with each other. It's 12 minutes long. No reason why everyone shouldn't sit down and watch this movie. You could watch it once a day. Yeah, you could. It'd be like your daily meditation. You could watch one frame a day. And then when you're an old man, you'd be like, Oh, that man is shooting at me. <laughs> it's now time to induct the new members of the Welcome to the Basement Hall of Fame. These hallowed halls will see five more personalities added to them and one non-human entity. And unlike last year, we have discussed the inductees and we've come to a consensus on them. Our first new member of the Hall of Fame can best be described by this. Sitting on the bullet. Sinking of power. He is not the living embodiment of authority, but he is the living embodiment of udacity. It is Der Adler himself, Udo Kier. The perfect Serbian Nazum. And like a sneaky mouse, Udo kept cropping up in our movies this year, and so we had to bring him into the Hall of Fame. Next up is Lord Summer Isle himself, and Dracula! Christopher Lee. Christopher Lee played Scaramanga in a Bond film, The Man with the Golden Gun, and I believe there's another Bond villain who's on the list. A man who I single-handedly shoehorned into the Hall of Fame by myself, Danish actor Mass Mikkelsen, otherwise known as One-Eye, otherwise known as Welcome to the Basement Hall of Famer. Who's next, Craig? A personal hero of yours? Yes, man, it is. It is none other than River Phoenix, star of my own private Idaho, who was taken from us far too young. We are more than happy to bring him into the loving arms of our Hall of Fame. As far as I know, there's been no one who has appeared in more than three movies in our show. But there's been one person who has played 
eight different roles in two movies, and that would be Eleanor Braun. She plays the double agent in Help and seven different roles in Bedazzled. Congratulations, Miss Braun. You are in the Hall of Fame. You can breathe a sigh of relief. And that leaves our non-human category. As you'll recall, last year we inducted the Megaforce Thumb Kiss. And this year, our inductee is a little more nebulous, a little more intangible. Our inductee in the non-human category is Dancing. Yes, black man, dance to Dixie. All you had to do to be a dancer back then? You too could dance this way with one half of an easy lesson. I wish I could drive a car made out of dancing. It's time for our next short film, Craig. Christmas may be over, but gentle family entertainment can be watched all year long. Especially this film, about a young boy who makes an unusual friend in France. You'll swell with joy and drift off full of good feelings after you've watched The Red Balloon. I have seen this one. They forced us to watch it when I was in like first and second and third grade. I never saw it in school. No. I don't know why the nuns of St. John Vianney were trying to get us into French New Wave, but... <laughs> It didn't hold. There's still, when I was in college, I was like, ah, I, I, I don't get it. Released in 1956 and directed by Albert Lamaurice, Le Ballon Rouge is the only short film ever to win the Academy Award for Best Original Screenplay. Well, congratulations. Le Ballon, maintenant! Oh, I'm ready for my heart to be touched I'm by a balloon. The red balloon begins with a young French boy finding a red balloon. And for freeing him... The balloon becomes his best friend. Somehow you can tell that that balloon is, is French. There's <laughs> something about it. It follows him while he runs down the streets and while he runs up other streets. Is there any dialogue in this? You can tell me. Possiblement. <laughs> oh, come on. La droite de bicicleta! He discovers that the balloon has a consciousness of its own and can float around at will. Wow, a living balloon. Bonjour. Je m'appelle Stu. <laughs> <coughs> he got he got the consumption from uh too long in paris he shows up a little late for school and there's a truancy officer is that who the old guy is yeah he was He's a, a truancy tru oh officer. i didn't know that yeah. he was just a weird old guy he looks like william burroughs a boy i'm going to score me some junk go off to meet dr benway <laughs> But then the balloon torments the old man. I will kill you! Adults can't stand balloons. So then the boy visits a junk market. Oh, there's a Picasso. There's a Rembrandt here at the flea market. There's sure. a Hitler. I finally realized what I am. <laughs> I thought I was a person. The red balloon spots a blue balloon being held by a girl. Yeah, the red balloon's like, hey, I'm following her. And the kid's like, hey, man, no, you're my buddy. Bros before loons. Yeah. Yeah, the local kids show up. And they want the balloon for themselves. Yes. When you're a jet, you're a jet on the way. We're going to get that balloon. We're going to kill it. And they tie the balloon to the ground. They start throwing rocks at it. The balloon is... God, he's just, never hurt anyone. You don't want the guess the balloon. Yeah, and the boy gets the balloon back for a while. 
All of this fuss over a balloon? Yeah. It's still recovering from the war. <laughs> C'est moi, stu à nouveau. <laughs> the boy tells the balloon, fly away, fly away, balloon. But no, the balloon doesn't fly away. No, he says, no, I have your back. You and me, we're going to go down together. One of the boys throws a rock and hits the balloon, and the balloon slowly deflates. And it dies. And they stomp on it, and they kill it. But all the balloons in Paris, they hear the dying breath of the red balloon. I wish there was a song from Les Mis that I could sing right now. Will you join in our crusade? Will you be strong and float with me? Somewhere beyond the barricades, there is a sky for us to flee. And they come. You lost your friend, but we are here for you. And he grabs all of their ropes and strings. Off they go. Oh, over... <coughs> Got some shit. Off they go over Paris to live a life among balloons rather than the humans that he so despises. Finn. I've got a tear in my eye over the fate of the red balloon. It's very sad, but you know, it is just what a you gonna do. What are you gonna <laughs> do? Oscar for best original screenplay? I think 1956 was kind of a fallow period for writing, if I'm that was the to... case. American in Paris might have come out that year. I might be wrong. It's a beautiful story. Did you know how it was going to end? I knew the balloon was gonna get popped at yeah. some point. I mean, I didn't have to know to know, but it's a good story for kids. You know what? No, it's not. I'm I'm fine with it today. <laughs> when I was pressed into watching this when I was a kid, like once a year, I did not like this movie at all. Why not? It made me sad and confused and oh, well, and that's... there was and all the kids in it were horrible except for the main kid who was just kind of spooky. Yeah, but it teaches kids lessons, how to grow and develop emotions. Yeah. Don't be a little ruffian and don't just destroy things because you can. Yeah. And find the beauty in simple things and, you know, make your own fun. Why couldn't you learn that, Craig? I could make my own fun and I wasn't mean to kids. Kids were mean to me. Yeah, so yeah. I should have went out and found a balloon. I saw the movie and I'm like, if I get a balloon, I'll make too much of an emotional bond with it. And then all the kids from the neighborhood will come and chase after me because they go to the public schools and I go to the Catholic school. The red balloon, it touched our hearts, it dazzled our eyes, and it can do the same to you. Check it out if you haven't seen it. Before we get to customer comments, I want to talk about these. Our notebooks that we've been using for the past two years. Mine is falling apart. Yeah, mine too. And today, I used up the last page of the notebook. We're going to have to retire these and get some new ones. We will uh, send them to the Smithsonian, where <laughs> I'm sure they'll be put right in the first room to be preserved for the next generation of movie watchers. Customer comments. Hey, just because we're taking a break for a month doesn't mean you can't go to welcometothebasementshow.com. You can see all of our episodes there, and we'll be updating our Hall of Fame very soon. And, of course, there is a PayPal donation button. You can donate to support this show. All this year, there have been so many generous donors who have given of their personal funds to support this show, and we sure do appreciate it. We have Mara, who writes, This is my Christmas present to you for being so awesome. Ho, ho. Dennis. Alberta. Sean, Leonard, who writes, Just watched the Valhalla Rising episode. Really appreciate your subtle tribute to the late Lou Reed. And Jennifer, who says, I know all the ladies love Craig, as do I, but Matt, you're cute too. Hey, he is. He's all right. Once again, we want to thank you for all of your generous support. It means so much to us. It's such a joy to do this show and to know that there are there's a great audience who's so supportive. Uh, makes us just want to keep on doing it. And now it is time for Seen It. Seen It. Come back. Come back, seen it. <laughs> All right, it's the last scene of the year, folks. At Vets asks, "Have you seen Paths of Glory?" Yes, I have seen it. Seen it. It is an early Stanley Kubrick movie. He did it with Kirk Douglas, and it is an anti-war movie, and it's really good. Francois Truffaut said that the problem with making an anti-war movie is that if you film war, it's just so naturally cinematic that it has to look cool. Oh, sure. Paths of Glory does not glorify war in any way at all. It looks horrible. Really beautiful movie that way. Dwayne Holman Jr. on Facebook. You guys should definitely watch Breathless, a.k.a. A Bout de Souffle. It's one of the iconic films of the French New Wave cinema era and one of Jean-Luc Godard's best films. Seen it. Seen it. I remember the scene of the car. I remember various other little shots, but 
really what it's about, I don't even know. I, I don't think it's really about anything. It's a Jean-Luc Godard movie. Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't get a plot until about halfway into the movie, and then all of the jump cuts and the amorphous wandering of the first half of the movie starts to make sense and starts to find context. It's a movie that invented jump cuts. I oh, think, yeah. So that if there's a very long conversation going on, can just, you know, cut, you know, out a whole point, ramble on and on and on without having to show every single on um, the film. Well said, Craig. Thanks. Vigarda Hogland, I believe I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, have you seen Jim Jarmusch's Dead Man? It's a haunting and quietly lyrical Western noir, one of Johnny Depp's most overlooked performances. Yes, I have seen it. I liked you better when you was a whore. Seen it. If you watch Jim Jarmusch movies, he makes such small, intimate movies. The fact that he could do an epic, you know, and he has the entire expanse of the Old West there, and... Uh, changes everything about westerns when he makes it. It's really a singular movie. Muhammad Egypt writes, Avatar, gosh, it's overrated. Seen it. Not seen it. What? I was going through a rough patch. I couldn't afford to spend all the money to see it on the big screen in uh, in 3D. Well, you may as well not see it. Exactly. The story was so dull and dumb and simple that I wish they had just done away with it entirely, and w- the movie was just like, a tour of Pandora. Oh, here we see some Pandora wildlife. Let's watch them for a while. Because that was really the fascinating part of the movie, was seeing all these crazy flowers and weird beasts that would run out. And then when the the, the romance and the and the stupid uh, the war. villain and the war and all that, it's just like, ugh. Just show me the plants. Even if I could see the original in 3D now, it'll, be, it'll still be four-year-old. 3D. I'm sorry, I've seen Gravity. We watched the Red Balloon and enjoyed that, and that's 60 years old. Yeah, I know, that balloon. You really believe that <laughs> balloon has a mind of its own. You but don't... Avatar is totally dated now. And that's who right. Who cares? Doing effects on sight just works better every single time. Uh, yeah, yep. you're right. Here it is, the last scene it of the year. It is from Sarah Lamont. I imagine you guys would have seen this because you've mentioned Orson Welles at least once, but Citizen Kane? Seen it. Seen it. Now, hang on a second. I don't want to talk about how great Citizen Kane is, because we all know that already. I want to hear about what you didn't like about Citizen Kane. What are the negatives? Oh, that's 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 real easy. Third act. Marion, is that her name? The, uh-huh. She was insufferable. She's not a sympathetic character. You know what else is bad about Citizen Kane? Old age makeup. <laughs> you can see the wrinkles and, and Orson's bald cap. The makeup just looks like it was caked on them with a trowel. The bad thing about the movie that I love is how Joseph Cotton, he starts out the movie, he's very, very soft-spoken and sensitive. But somehow he turns into an old black man <laughs> towards the end of the movie. When I was young, they told me that, that nurses were, were beautiful. Oh, I'm finding them more true today than I did back then. That disagreeable old man I have become. <laughs> anyway, despite all that, Citizen Kane, it is one of the greatest movies of all time, so... And for the next nine years, I still have to say it, better than Vertigo. It's going to be a new year very soon, and that means New Year's resolutions. This show was created based on a New Year's resolution. Craig had a New Year's resolution this year that he fulfilled, and that was... To finally see Barry Lyndon. And I watched it with him. Yes, it's the last major Kubrick movie I had not seen. It's better than you'd think it would be. Yes. I have a New Year's resolution challenge for you, the deer hunter. You had to tell them that I haven't seen the deer hunter yet? He hasn't seen the deer hunter. (sighs) Okay. I'm not done yet. You don't have all of 2014 to watch The Deer Hunter. You have to watch it in January. In January? Because, for seeing it, in our first show of the year, we will be discussing The Deer Hunter. I think I can do this. All right. Do you have a New Year's resolution challenge for me? I just thought of it now. Heaven's Gate. Oh, you son of a bitch. (laughs) That's right. And I'll watch it too. Okay. It's time for some gift giving. Yes, it is. And I understand you have a gift for me. This is a This is a rare treat. Here you go. Oh, boy. I know what this is. (laughs) (laughs) There we go. Barry Lyndon soundtrack on vinyl. You bet. And I have a gift for you. I have it right here in the signature gift box. I will open it for you. I have written you a poem. Really? I had to dig deep to write these words, and I hope that they mean something to you. I hope so, too. And it does not rhyme. 
Oh. Oh. <clears throat> We've seen a lot this year, you and I. Double blackface. Ostriches, hostages. Beach ball aliens. Dracula's librarian. And the landlord's daughter. And through it all, you haven't been a real-life crazy person. Or a stuck-up Radcliffe bitch. Or a weird cowboy bellhop. And just as Two Ball loves the garp, I love this Shandango of ours, you brain bug. <laughs> you fill me with not inertia. Ground control to major bomb. We're going to need a bigger jazz. I have heard the sound of one Buchholz clapping. One, my own private Idaho potato a man eats. Ha ha. Salam Kijie, my friend. May gay breezes forever sweep you into alliances, and gazebos full of band. May you never get sucker tugged, sandwich machine attacked, or fall for the oldest grift in the book, the pants con. May you always make out five times a night, enjoy an absence of Attenborough, a fully intact Grand Central Terminal, a bullet to sit on, power to think of, schnopping, schneeping, fake-ass potions, and gallon upon gallon of good old American peanut butter. May you always be free to ride Finsley's ice cream truck across the Verrazano Narrows Bridge, never to be hassled by the man or stew, and never to get lost in the misc. The whole world is staring at you. Mother of mercy, is this the end of the season? It is. Bona fortuna. But keep your ass off my pillow. So there you go. There is nobody's pillow whose ass I'd like to not be on more. What is it with you being sweet these days? What happened to you? <laughs> well, it must be this show, and how much I love doing it, and how much we love making this show for you good people out there. It means so much to us that you come back every other Friday and watch our little program. We're coming back February 7th, which is our Valentine's Day episode. We will see you in the new year. We love you. Goodbye. Goodbye. The dance sequence in a silent movie. Yeah. When you couldn't even hear the song. They might have just had Use a your imagination. Out. If I had an imagination, I wouldn't have to watch movies. <laughs> he sits there in case I in case I make trouble. 